Hello YouTube gardeners, this is Drew coming at you from Casa Aquaponics in Malta. Today we're going to talk about uh, auto siphons, bell siphons. Um, I started uh, getting this last grow bed in for my system. One down there, two here. This will be the third. Um, it's replacing the original small grow bed here. It's only about uh, two feet by a foot and a half. Um, so it's an IBC grow bed, the top of anyhow. The bottom I used as the uh, sump underneath grow bed one. Um, I originally planned on doing the video the whole thing, but uh, I got a little bit into it and totally forgot about it. So from the start, take a grow bed, much like uh, a fish tank, and you want to chop it, uh, for the grow bed anyhow, you want to chop it a minimum of 12 inches deep. That's what that is there. And leave the remainder for either a fish tank or you can use it for your sump tank as, uh, as I did here. And that's about it really. Get it painted up. You gotta have paint on it or some kind of covering. Uh, especially if you're in direct sunlight like I am here. Uh, if not, you're gonna end up getting a lot of uh, algae growth and uh, whatnot on your rocks on the inside of your grow bed. And that's gonna take away nutrients and things like that from your system. Which you don't want, of course. Um, once you've got your, essentially, your bed all leveled out, in my case here I'm using uh, some cinder blocks uh, leveled out with some 2x4s and whatnot like that, just to get everything the right height for the sump tank and all the drainage. And I'm also using um, pallets, as opposed to using sleepers going directly across the bricks. I decided to go with pallets. It's easy to level them, makes it nice, uh, good support. And you can see here, i am uh, got paint on it and whatnot, and it is, uh, I did mine 14 inches deep, that's how I like them. And i uh, got everything lined up for the plumbing of it. I've got my drain underneath ready for it, make sure it's all going to work out good. I did make a mistake once and uh, try to put a drain where there was obstructions and whatnot with the pallets and ended up being quite a mess. So make sure that all your plumbing does line up. Then you need to drill a hole. Well, first off, let me explain the auto siphon, the bell siphons here. Essentially, it's uh, about three different parts. You're going to have your uh, your shroud, which is essentially just your cover to allow the water passage through the grow bed and through the stone, but not actually let your stone or your grow media, whatever you're using, pass into your drainage. Just got some slits and holes and whatnot drilled into it. I'll probably add a few more into this one, as this was the original. Okay, then you have the bell siphon cap anyhow. Um, in these grow beds, some people are using 25 mil, uh, like a one inch, uh, for your drainage. And that works just fine. I find it takes a bit too long to drain out. So, in these cases, I'm using a 32 mil, uh, inch and a quarter. Uh, and in that case, you have to take a larger... Uh, bell here. Um, in my case here I'm using 63 mil. These are cut at 14 inches with a pressure cap on the end, make a nice tight seal and uh, drill your holes uh, minimum of at least uh, one inch up because you don't want to drain it right to the right to the very bottom. You do want to keep a bit of your nutrients and such at the bottom. And then the second row of holes, let me put those down here, the second row of holes you can see right in there, this determines uh, the height that uh, the drainage will go and when the water comes down to this level here the air gets sucked in and breaks the siphon and here I've got it all put together but the top bit here that is your upstand or your downpipe some people call it and then in here this is where the tank connects I've got a washer for a watertight seal on the top I use a uh, socket by BSP it's essentially a socket by thread or glue by thread washer and then on this one, I use a socket by female thread. So it obviously screws in. And it comes down into a 90, along into another 90, and drains out. Um, in s some cases, you don't have to use the second 90, but uh, I like to, to use it. Uh, the first 90 essentially just creates the, uh, the back pressure enough to make your siphon. And uh, also in here, I'm gonna slide in a piece of uh, 
just under, it's a large one inch diameter plastic tubing just on the inside here and that's going to uh, assist in starting the siphon. Well that's it really for parts that you need for this. Um, so what you got to do is, these are an inch and a quarter and it has a one inch thread so you need to make a one inch hole, at least a one inch hole. Um, not too big though because you want to make sure that you're not going to have any water leaks. So I've already done that and now I'll screw in uh, all the bits and bobs and get back to you. Alright, we're back. Got the grow bit uh, filled with my media. I think I'm still about one bag short though, it's a little bit low there. And uh, you can see, I can hope you can see in there anyhow. Um, uh, well the water's a bit dirty from the new media but there is the uh, the, the downspout which goes down into my adapter, then into a 90, and off to the grow bed. Working like a charm. Toss in the bell siphon, wait for it to rise, and it should be off. Just set this here. Let's just go check it out. go start to trickle and then full bore that's it that's one bell siphon if you have any questions comments or suggestions just put them in the drop box below I'll be happy to answer any questions regarding siphons or any other aquaponic issue like that um, uh, the reason I did go for a 32 mil as opposed to a 25 just for faster drainage that's pretty much it. Um, uh, but keep in mind, 32 mil uh, drain pipe, you need to have a 63 mil bell siphon. If you're using a 25 mil uh, drain pipe, um, I always found it better to use a 50 mil bell siphon. That's it. That's all. Thanks for visiting. This is Malta. Have a good day.